Welcome back to Night Mind, friends, and part two of our exploration of ten tapes. I told you that you'd see me again real soon, Vin and I. We're going to get back into it shortly. I just want to mention two things. First, this really is the second part of a topic exploration, so you'll need to hit the first part if you haven't already, or you'll be quite lost. Second point. We've had some moments of needing to really listen to understand what's being said so far. And there's been a lot of walking around with H on his adventure. So Raycon is here sponsoring the second half of our journey to make both aspects of the situation better. If you're a constant Nightmind viewer, you already know how excellent Raycon's everyday earbuds are for your listening needs. They look, feel, and sound better than ever with their sleek design, variety of colors, and optimized gel tips, providing the perfect in-ear fit. Whether hitting the beach to finish out summer or chasing down a load of codes in the woods, Raycon's everyday earbuds are ready to travel with you wherever you go. And again, I cannot stress how excellent this case is. It carries the earbuds and it's the charger. And once you pull them out to play, they pair up faster than any device I've ever used. As for the listening experience, you've got options. Different sound profiles are provided to customize your experience. Pure sound, balanced, and bass. My favorite, because it prioritizes bass boosting, letting you feel your music. And because Raycon earbuds have a 32-hour battery life and 8 hours of continuous playtime, they're prepared for the inevitable moment when you're exploring an abandoned building at night and spend hours looking for a VHS tape being followed by a spooky mystery man and need some music to keep your heartbeat stable while barely surviving close encounters until the dawn comes and... Wow, that is really specific. We really live and breathe horror scenarios like it's everyday life at this point, don't we? Thankfully, Raycon's everyday earbuds have over 50,000 five-star reviews, so there must be plenty of other explorers out there putting them to use alongside us. Raycon's everyday earbuds are already half the price of other premium audio brands, but right now, you can get 15% off your order by going to buyraycon.com forward slash nightmind, or just click the link in the video description box below. Again, that's 15% off your order by going to buyraycon.com forward slash nightmind, or just click the link in the video description box below. Thanks to Raycon for sponsoring this video, and for the offer to Nightmind viewers. Now, let's see how long it took H to wake up from that knockout Tape 5 delivered. The event we witnessed took place on July 31st, 2021, and while some may have taken a day or two to recover from an apartment-shaking paranormal event before even speaking, H got right back up the next day, August 1st, and uploaded a message declaring that he lived, but would be stepping away for a little while to collect his thoughts and consider how to progress from here. He returned 17 days later, giving him a good two weeks to recover and get his bearings. Uh, hi. I don't know if I should do this in Swedish or English, but I guess I'll do it in English since I'm not entirely sure. My name is... You, you can call me Jay. I'm calling because I think I have some stuff I think would be of interest to you. Sorry to be so vague, but I'll take I'll, I'll tell you more if I if the if we get a chance to talk. You can reach me on this number. Uh, okay. Um. Bye. Home the dog. Klockan twenty two and fifty eight. Will you avlyssna dina me? New tape arc. New character. That's unexpected, but promising. Hopefully we learn more in the follow-up videos.
That's pretty significant. A whole web page saved to a USB drive. Well, let's use the link provided. In front of you, neatly lined up, are ten tapes. You don't know why. They are alike, yet vastly different. Some feel familiar, some you've never seen. Each tape link is clickable, and naturally, we've got to take a look ourselves. The first is a passage describing Aegis' encounter with the tape in second-person perspective, or perhaps someone else's. What you have in your possession has been held by many. The encounter with the second tape, also in second person, outlines a sense of fear that wasn't present with the first, and relates the experience to something religious, as if you, for the first time, understand the things you've read about in scripture and poetry. The third one is... Hmm. Well, let me just read this one, if I may, and provide an example of what we're dealing with. You firmly lift the third tape from its place, struck by a sense of wonder. This one took you by surprise, didn't it? Fond is the memory. This you cannot deny, but there is something muddy about this one, isn't there? Cloudy, maybe. Some sense of hopelessness, some sense of self-doubt. You can't quite place it, but it's undeniably there. It felt like a gift, but a gift you don't know if you ever wish to receive. Behind you were the great lengths you traversed. Beneath you were confusion and the slowly but ever so intensely growing sense of panic. Up ahead laid uncharted waters and, with just a little luck, rest, warmth. With the same amount of determination, you place it back. Four starts with a touch of humor, almost. What is there to say about this one? The rest of the text describes the temporary transitory nature of tape four, which led us so immediately to, of course, tape five. The text here describes the tape with a sense of exaltation, paired with an inability to move forward due to the weight of the object. Not physically, but mentally, spiritually. And while this bit of poetry at the end may be on the track of enticement regarding the contents, it's curious enough to examine. See, for the orange glow of the nearly extinct fire that gently gassed its dying breast in the darkness, a whirlwind was just what was needed, for through it a spark spiraled up in the darkness, took hold and lit the fire all over again. And it's going to take a lot more to extinguish the flame who's been put out once before. The flame who's been put out once before. Not sure I like the sound of that concerning the events of Tape 5's playthrough. Tape 6, null, and some descriptive text scattered in a glitching block. I just adjusted your pills and buckets, crooked, your home. Tape 7, null. Tape 8, null. 9 and 10, the same, except for a hidden message in Tape 10 seen only by highlighting. Does it worry you to be alone? This is a very different approach for the game, and most games, really. We so often do see website elements involved in ARGs and unfiction, but to present a single web page, previously unhosted and of this nature, it really capitalizes on the major tonal shift we've just experienced with the phenomenon of Tape 5. The world of familiarity in these matters has ended. We are on the other side of a door with H, and his first contact through it is almost a loving and voyeuristic description of his own journey by its orchestrator. Taking the matter of prose and composition aside entirely, this is effective in a way we don't often see, with an approach that I've never seen. Now, there is the matter of actual gameplay for continuation involved in this HTML script, and H goes about it by following the clues from the page for tape 6. Searching the home in accordance with mentions of items, he realizes that pills and buckets refer to the art piece in the apartment featuring both, and in taking it down, discovers a record hidden in the frame. Fool Number One by Julie Brenner. Inside, a document folded up, with several images in squares, also along folds. What immediately comes to mind is a paper cube that's yet to be assembled, but there are too many squares for the normal variety. The audience comes to the rescue on this one, with the user Dave rearranging the shapes in the squares and discovering the form of a table. H realizes it resembles his bedside table and investigates, finding a drawer with no handle. On the underside, a series of squares again. It turns out that the original paper cube style sheet was meant to overlay a number pad like you would see on a phone, equating certain squares with numbers. The result had to be run through Nihilus Cipher, coming out to White Sklar, Black Hook, with Sklar being a brand. H catches a bass guitar in his apartment fitting that description, and is rewarded with a cassette tape. If he can get it out of the guitar. It takes a while, but he soon succeeds.
You already know what we need. Spectrogram. Stats. The message read, Stop resisting. You are not in charge. You will be replaced. You're too late for him. Clearly this message is out of line with the rest of what we've received. If you ignore the moment of asking H or the audience to stop playing. It's at this point we should address the matter, because it's not congruent with the apparent desire of X. And now, we have a message that doesn't seem to be for us, or for H. Do you remember the issue raised earlier concerning potential game jackers? The imposters that X warned about? Perhaps these were never threats from outside the game. Within the playing field of ten tapes, there may have been, and still is, an antagonist to X, misdirecting H and attempting to stop the game or gain their own outcome. Speaking of outsiders, remember that voicemail H received earlier? We have an update. Du sa typ att du hade någonting, något som jag vill se. Kanske. Jag vet, alltså, jag vet inte om det är relevant eller inte, men... Eh... Jag fattar. Jag, jag, jag kikar jättegärna på, 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 på vad det är du har. Vill du berätta lite om det? Ja, alltså, om jag, det är lättast om jag bara kan maila det till dig så får du, så får du liksom avgöra om det är någonting som känns... Eh... Okej. Okay. Kan jag höra av mig till dig redan ikväll igen om du skickar det nu, eller...? Ett par dagar. Okej, okay. bra. Men, men ja, vi hörs då, antar jag. Ja. Okej. Okay. Hej. While H waits for the email, he provides the finding on the cassette tape. Additional study examining the voice stutters spelled out side B R R R. That's certainly different for a spectrogram, isn't it? At first, it was difficult to gauge the message here, but a careful study of the dot pattern in the makeup was code for SSTV, Slow Scan Television. An app was used to interpret the signal, resulting in this. Hard to tell who the guy is, but the code was ROT cipher for Peel No Elephants. It reports in a video update for those not in the code-breaking group how solutions were found, and that he doesn't know who the person in the TV signal is. Shortly after this, another update. When the .io on top of the image is combined with the text below, it produces an itch.io link. And yes, for those familiar with the site, it is what you're thinking. <laughs> oh no. What is this? A diminished tribute? <laughs> 
Let's see. This video was on August 26, 2021, and Diminish started on November 7, 2020. Yeah, easily could be. Sorry, I just had to take a moment to check that possibility. It's too funny as a possible tip of the hat. So, what's the objective of the game? Collecting a tape and then putting it in a player, which produces codes. I have a feeling that H will go over what was found through several playthroughs momentarily. For now, we have an update on that new character, Jay, whose email finally arrived. Okay, so it says... Hi. Uh, here is what I wanted to show you. Apologize for the delay. I tried to get my own copier to work, but that seems to have, uh, I guess, given up or broken. Anyway, I went to a library this Friday and was able to scan it there. Before you read through, I want to explain a few things. Okay, read through. Number one, these are pages from my dad's diary. He left my mother when I was just a kid and I never knew him. My mother passed away a few years ago now and I have just started going through this box that my mother saved with, uh, with clothes that, were, that belonged to my dad. Uh, and among the clothes, I've found a couple of diaries and diary pages. Number two, okay. The black boxes uh, over the names are done by me with some sort of black tape I borrowed at the library because I want to remain anonymous. J is me and S is my mother. That's all you need to know. And three, it's fine for you to record and show the pictures to your followers, but I do not want media attention. I guess it's a translation of that. Uh, so please do not reveal my information. Lastly, I just want to explain the order of the pictures. Okay. Picture 1 to 5 are the last pages of a book I found in the inner pocket of a jacket. The remaining pages of that book were water damaged and unreadable, but the last few pages had a, a plastic bookmark that must have acted as sort of a protection from the water. Picture 6 is from an older diary, dated 1987-1988 but which had a few empty pages left at the end that my father seems to have used when the book in picture one to five ended. Oh, okay. So after he used up the first book and didn't have a new one, he went to one of his older books that had a few pages left, okay. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, this is a lot of text. I'm just scrolling through it. Wait, let me... There. Um... Yeah, this is like a lot of text. I will not have the time to translate all of this. Um, as I said in the TikTok, I, I have some stuff to do today. I got to swing by work. I got called in. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll... Where do I put this? I'll put this on my, on my Google Drive and in the description of this video um, so that you have the PDF. Hopefully someone else has time to translate all of this uh, and read through it. I guess I'll be kind of going through it a little bit on my phone during the day, but I won't have time to translate it. For those who needed dead family members' writings crossed off on your ARG tropes list, your wait is over. As for the introduction of this element, the presentation feels a little more real than it has for other occurrences and projects we've seen. The shots of the diary are well composed, and so is the diary itself, giving the scenario a touch of realism. The plausibility of a stranger making a connection because they've seen H's videos is actually very high, as established by the virality of the first few parts. I'm not against this touch. It's well implemented and on introduction, supported by the circumstances. This entire video also brings back the feeling I mentioned in part one of our exploration. That contentment that comes from a storytelling position of the home office detective faced with the paranormal. And naturally, we get to play along now ourselves. A translation was provided by the community, which we're lucky enough to have here. The first page, from February 22, 1991, establishes the author as Jay's father, and that his wife is referred to as the letter S. It's shortly after the birth, and the father, hereafter referred to by the community as O, is getting used to the idea of his new station in life. Months later, O is in the yard when he notices something peculiar in one of the trees facing the forest. A note nailed to the wood. By foot, 14 minutes north of the island. 
at the House of Heads, take a right through the trees. Where the heart is, you're done. With a little help from his wife later, O deciphers the directions and follows them, coming across a hunter's hut filled with animal trophies, the House of Heads. Continuing to walk from here according to the note led him to an abandoned cottage. Inside hung a painting reading, Home Sweet Home, behind which was a book. Most of the pages were blank, but it had a mark on the back. One. Further in the diary came the entry from July 22, 1991, describing a need to find a key and how O has read the first two novels again and again. The journey that H is undergoing has occurred before, and back in 1991, the tapes were small books. In November, O apologized to his son and wife for being a bad person, writing, I know what I have to do, and when I've done that, everything can return to normal again. We'll move to a new house. There won't be any novels to speak of ever again. I'll return to a good husband and father. But I have to do this first, and I beg for your forgiveness. If not now, I hope that sometime in the future you can forgive me. It shouldn't be more than a week or two, but I dare not tell you. I have to sneak out during the night. I don't want to risk your safety. Jay, if you read this, try to understand. I promise that everything will be like before when I get back. I am in eternal debt to you for all the loneliness I cause you with all this. I swear that you will never hear the name F out of my mouth again when I'm done with this. So, with that said, I've got it. All these months of obsession, these long nights, the hunt for clues. Not to speak of the attack. God, I'm happy that S and J were out of the house when it happened. We'll finally end. Things take a turn from the expected path here, as O says. He made a mistake. He missed something. A detail I figured out and now it's me who pulls the strings. The stupid bastard. There will be no ten novels, there will be five novels, and then five more delivered at the same time collected by me myself personally. But I am not stupid, F. I know that you read what I write here. I am not going to tell you how you forgot to cover your tracks. But believe me, I know. And now I am on my way there. And you got that at least, F. You know where I'm going. I'm taking the train. You got that. And then? Come on, think. The final entry speaks of a method of victory in a game against F, a weakness, something to do with saying something backwards and counting down. It's implied that O went out somewhere to achieve whatever was written down, but so much of the writing was cut off that it can't be interpreted. All of this, of course, demonstrates that not only has this game occurred before, it took a direction by the player that seemed proactive rather than reactive. And as a result, O was never seen again. So, how does the follow-up work for the narrative in the current iteration of the game? And you're probably wondering what my proposition was. Well, uh, I'll put the email up right here. I'm not going to translate it. It doesn't contain anything interesting, but if you want to translate it, that's fine. I asked him if instead of me sending him a thousand emails, if he would do like a live call with me that I could stream where we could ask all the questions we have. So he said yes, and it's happening tomorrow at six. Like always, that's Swedish time, and I don't know all the other time zones, but basically it's 24 hours from this video being posted to TikTok, and also I'll put up another one with one of those counters so that you can see when it happens. The live is gonna take place on YouTube, but before then I need all your questions, because this might be the like one chance we get to really ask him things. So post your questions on this video, and also like the other questions you see that you want the answer to, so I know which ones are popular or not, and I'll be going through them and asking him everything tomorrow. Okay, that should be all. Thank you. I am calling him now. Hello? Wait, I need to... I don't know if you can hear me. Uh, hey, can you hear me? Okay, there seems to be uh, some technical... Can you hear me? Okay, I'm, I, 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 I muted uh, the Discord mic, I think, successfully. Uh, is that not fucking him? Is that not the exact guy? Do I, 
do I bring that up with him? That's one mystery solved. And clearly, X wanted a connection made with Jay. As for the questions asked, this interview was about an hour long, and while Jay was forthcoming with answers, not much seemed revelatory in the wake of the Tyree translation. The reveal of Jay's more direct insertion into events, however, is worth seeing. Is that you? Did you used to have a, just a mustache like that? So, did you find this? Where I... Um... Yeah, okay, it's kind of a long story, but basically, uh, since you know, I, I, I get all these, like, the clues and everything that kind of goes to um, different, uh, they, every clue kind of leads to a new clue that leads to a new clue, etc. And then it finally usually ends up with me getting a, 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 a tape. And, and uh, in between the tapes are all, all these little clues. And then I got... I have a tape like that, and on it, the audio gave us that picture. I, I can tell that it's me, but I... Yeah, I don't know what where that's from. I should probably go through the rest of that stuff. Yeah. In, in my mom's... From my mom's storage. Yeah, I was gonna ask you that. Like, uh, I don't wanna. I know there's one more that is from there. From... That I didn't bring because it's it just had a bunch of jackets in it, like leather jackets. Okay. And like, y you know how warm it's been, so I didn't yeah. really think I would need leather jackets. Uh. So. Yeah, I don't know, like, could, do you think you'd be able to go through those boxes anytime soon? Um, I mean, I'm going to try as soon as, I, as I'm able to, because, like, like, at least that one box shouldn't be too hard to get a hold of. I just need to, just need to talk to the people with the, has all the storage because like like i mentioned it's all the stuff i need to have a smoke yeah, yeah yeah you you go and do that and i'll call you back in in like a little while uh if you have the time if you want me to okay cool after this a new video appeared on peony's tiktok presenting a code that broke down to a bitly link where a strange google form awaited followers with so many moving parts at once it provided a short recap video I'll be talking in this one to save time, but it is not a full recap. The other day I did a live stream with a person who calls himself Jay. And the first thing we noticed is that he is the guy in this picture, which I, of course, asked him about. We talked for about an hour, and I'm not gonna lie to you, it got pretty heavy at times. And out of respect for Jay and what he told me, I'm not gonna try to summarize it here. But if you wanna see it, it's on YouTube, link in bio. Highly recommend it. Apart from that, we have a few loose ends right now. There's the text document we got a while back that we still don't know what to do with all of this text. There's at least one thing on this tape I don't think we fully figured out. There's the lilies.exe game we found, which when you beat it gives out these codes. And now since like an hour back, we got a hold of this, which is a bunch of questions and you have to like fill them in and we're stuck on like the third or fourth question, I think. So yeah, that's where we're at right now. As always, when we've found something new, I have linked the document in my bio. For full explanations on everything, check the recap channel in the Discord and I'll talk to you later. There's that mention of the results of the game we were hoping for. As for breakthroughs in the midst of all this, H returns quickly with excitement. So I just got back from work and I've been like catching up a little. Uh, so you know how this uh, handwriting has been like trying to help us with shit while this one hasn't been uh, quite as helpful, you might say. And, and you remember in the diary, uh, the dude who writes the diary is looking for 10 novels and then he's saying like, yeah, I figured out a way like a loophole, whatever, whatever, right? Uh, because he says he has a weakness. And in this, like the form we were filling out, there was he keeps coming back to a weakness over and over and over again, right? Uh, someone figured out what to answer in this entire like form, the end question, and they got an email back that said, he is still weak 
hurry. Uh, and this was like last night, but I've been working and I haven't been uh, keeping up. Oh, right. And, and half a page, like one of the diary pages were ripped, right? At the end, there's like a ripped page. Uh, where is it? There. So like a ripped page. This is the other half. And this could be paired up with the little thing down here. And this is like some tower and they in the discord figure out where this is but it's like it's been saying hurry since like last night so uh sorry if i'm like a little winded but i'm just getting my shit together because i'm leaving like uh i'm going there right now look at that it's a nice sunny day and i'm on my way to the subway station so uh to clarify a little bit this person before me has gone through basically the exact same thing, right? But with novels instead of tapes. And this was like in the 90s. And uh, basically that person is still alive somehow and is telling me that there is like a weakness to this whole thing. And he like figured out a way to get all of the novels. He was looking for novels instead of tapes. Uh, and th there, there, there was like a way for him to get all 10 of them um which me and and he's also saying that like x now is weak so like i can get the if i'm understanding correctly i can get the tapes like like all of them right now <laughs> and i don't think you fucking understand that i there's i've thought about it feels like i've thought about fucking nothing nothing but this for what like three months at this point at this point and it's like this is gonna be fucking I, I have a good feeling about this age is very helpful but meanwhile a line of questioning to the forum creator occurs that gives us a wildly different understanding of the situation Joe starts an email chain with the forum creator the character opposing X asking what to do the response? Help him find me. Destroy us. Joe asks, where are you? Also, what is the last word in the diary page you sent us? And what is that a picture of? Three questions, one answer. Tower. Hurry. He is weak still. I will let him. Your name. If this is you, I beg, please forgive me. Love you. Joe, presumably Jay, asks, What tower are you at? He has not been here before. I sketched it in diary. I sketched it? This is O, the man from 1991 who played the game of 10, communicating through means we don't understand in a state we can't begin to guess at. And Jay, his son, may have finally made contact after all these years. The audience scrambled to figure out which tower it was and found an apparent match in Stockholm, which they passed along to H, prompting the sudden video in which he tried to explain quickly and rushed out the door. As H makes his way to the tower, videos appear on the Peel No Elephant TikTok. Block letters are shown in the first, the ones H believes to be the opponent to X, saying, I have not spoken in days. A red flag, considering our current belief about the email chain. X then comes through, proposing a bit of trivia. Question 1. What year was the tower inaugurated? That turned out to be on May 31st, 2021, which doesn't track at all for the context of the diary. X knows that, asking in question 2, what year was the diary written? Naturally, it's 1991. That's 30 years between the diary and the tower. So X asks, since you know when the tower was built and the diary was written, why did you lead him here? One user, Isabel Kitten, answers, Because you used us. X replies, That's one way to put it. Or perhaps you value being entertained higher than his safety. Regardless, I'd like to express my most sincere gratitude for your help. Now, for the last question of the day. Do you want to see him? The answer was obviously yes, with some extra wishes. We'll see about the details, X replies. Let's see how he's doing. Ah, oh, that's it. So a lot of you have told me to bring a knife. I live in Sweden, we don't bring knives. You just don't walk around with a knife like that. 
I did bring a screwdriver instead, just in case. Out. I fucking threw it out. What do you want? Of course. Nothing. Yeah, this isn't even working. You know what? Here. You wanna be fucking fake with me? I'm done. You know how long I spent trying to get the code for this? Then you fucking do this shit. What the fuck? That series of videos came on September 7th, 2021. Itch did not upload again any time soon after, prompting a storm of comments to PNE and eliciting a response. What do you want from H? A user named Lisa asks. All in due time, X replies. My lovely little lilies of the valley. You played your part perfectly, but if you were to change your minds or go back to pretending like you care, I might consider it. If you ask nicely. I thought I'd post a duet and uh, ask X, whoever's running Peel Noel event, if you could just let H go. <laughs> um, just want to make sure he's safe and no harm comes to him. Please. You want to bring my boy H there for a little bit? Uh, you know, safe and sound would be the most preferred, but please just give it some thought and I'll uh, talk to you later. Uh, so if you could please send H back. We now know that that is within your power. We just want to see him safely return to us, so please. Hey, X, I know we both like being a little devious sometimes, but you might have gone too far. Can you bring back H? Please. 
Of course we care about age. We wouldn't be here otherwise. Let's Talk was a literal suggestion. A user with the Ten Tapes logo as their profile picture appeared in the Discord, quickly identified as X, and so did a voice channel in which only they could speak. The event was recorded and producing a garbled voice that resembled H's. A transcript was provided of the talk, which I'll read for purposes of clarity and speed, as the audio can be difficult to interpret. Welcome. Today, my lilies, I shall speak to you clearly. First of all, yes, you are correct in recognizing the voice you are listening to. However, that is as far as the similarities go between me and him. Throughout the years, I have been called many things. F. It. I believe you have referred to me as X. To me, it couldn't matter less what you choose to call me. And the person that you are referring to as H is, as of right now, still precisely where I want him to be, which is right here with me. And I thought to myself, why not speak to you in a familiar voice? So now with that out of the way, you'll hopefully manage to understand who it is that you're listening to. So let me get to the point of my visit to your lovely corners of Digital Realm. You spit on my name. Disrespect my work. Yet each time I appear, you celebrate me. You stand firmly in my shadow, dancing underneath my fruit. Yet you deem me an enemy. Yes, when you look at me, you see the force that you decided to fight against. You see the darkness, that of which you dream at night. And it is equally as fascinating as it is embarrassing to see you stumble. To see you try with all your might to grasp and be in control, so miserably fail every single time. <laughs> and you fail to realize what you are, what I am, how we correlate. You would be nothing without me. You worship me. You need me. But you also need an enemy. Humans are very binary in that sense. I fit the bill. The perfect figure onto which you can shine your light. To bounce this shadowy silhouette up at the wall and onto the already projected outline of what was already there. Waiting before I entered your consciousness. And all of this for what? Hmm? Why do you turn against me, the one who's given you all of that? What you are gathered here together for, all of this for what? The suffering of a single individual that you've never met in your life. Why do you regard him so highly? What did he ever do for you? I entertained you. I maintained your interest. I did this. All of it. And you don't need anyone else. And yet, as soon as a new interest arises, you are like maggots on a corpse. Filling your wretched mouths with all that you can fit before you draw your incorrect conclusions and call them facts. You disgust me. Every single last one of you filthy maggots disgust me so terribly. However, I guess you can also call me binary. Torn. There are two sides to every coin. But you see, while I do dream of ripping the flesh from your bones and bending your weak primate brain's ability to read your surroundings but needs written form into Mobius Strip, I also love my lilies. I really do. I know you can't grasp it. You can't understand that. And from your incompetent point of view, you will never deem what I feel as love, but I do love my lilies. I nurture my lilies. And oh my sweet lilies, my lovely lilies of the valley, I listen to you. So now, let's forget about everything but you and I. And let's turn this penta into a hexo in our pursuit of the deco. And then, on September 23rd.
Hi. Um, first of all, long time no see. If you're not in the Discord, uh, I would say that you have probably missed out on a whole bunch of things that's happened over these last few weeks. But uh, if it makes you feel any better, so have I. I have not um, really been around, <laughs> you could say. Um, but that being said, kids outside my window. When I find a new tape, I usually do a recap, and this time is no different. However, it's a little bit different because there's so much to recap. So uh, yeah, I just finished doing all of that, and it was super long. It's never gonna fit on TikTok unless I divide it into a hundred different parts. Um, so I just put it up on my YouTube, so you can watch that to get up to speed. It's in the link in my bio, and hopefully from here on out, I will not disappear into some sort of void for three weeks. So yeah. Let's uh, let's get the rest of these tapes, shall we? Thank you. Right, so, H is back, the tea mug is back, and we've got a recap. So let's visit the elements we haven't yet explored. Because yes, even as all of this was happening, there was more. Okay, I'm gonna keep going chronologically here. Uh, we figured out that the codes that we got from the Lilies game at the end, for example this one, T4R6L7-8, uh, could be translated to tape 4, row 6, letter 7 and 8. So going back to this text document that we really haven't done anything with yet, uh, and going to that tape, that row, and those letters, we could spell out uh, some short two-letter words, such as uh, fee or phi, uh, on and C or Sai, yeah, words like that. And back to the form, in one of the last steps in the form, there's an image that, when heavily tweaked, uh, you could vaguely see the order of the symbols. So knowing that order and having this phi on C and everything, and people figure out that phi was five, on was one, C was six, etc. Uh, and there was some fuckiness going on here that I'm not gonna go into here, but it was, yeah, w with some um, <clears throat> help uh, from a community member named Keith, uh, and with a lot of work uh, by a bunch of other people, the password was eventually figured out to be uh, Joeda PFR, I guess is how you would pronounce it. And this got us to the last page of the form, which had this image of a man. He was soon identified as, and sorry French people, uh, Villeneur, and it also had a text that said the blank of a man. And putting Joeda PFR through a Villeneur cipher uh, with the key duality, as in the duality of man, it gave us the phrase guess who. When entering guess who into the last field and sending in the form, emails started being just sent out rapidly from IO, saying things like, he is still weak, help him find me, uh, the tower, etc. We also got the missing half page that was ripped out of the diary and that contained this sketch. This video begins with IO saying that he hasn't spoken for weeks. So here everyone pretty much realizes that I've fallen straight into a trap. Um, except me, of course, uh, being out looking for this tower, having pretty bad reception and yeah, getting closer to the tower. Um, so after IO has said that he hasn't spoken for a while, X takes over and he lets everybody know that it's quiz time. Now to be clear here, I don't remember anything after this, up until around one to two days ago, but we'll get to that. While I'm gone, X asks for people to duet him, asking for me back, and they do. Lovely, nice, kind people. Silence, however, drives people kinda crazy. Uh, they manage to find Jay's Discord by just guessing the last four numbers of his like Discord ID and going through like all of them, and they reach out to him. He only replies with sending back a link to a song very suspicious. Song is on like some old record and I don't know, reminds me a lot of someone else I know. And after a few days, weeks, something like that, uh, this alleged J uh, sends a code to Skelly in the Discord and that translates into tell me, do you feel kinship with the ravening wolves? Which means absolutely nothing to anyone. But then he completely loses his cool and starts shooting out messages in all directions saying none of you need them. And no one has any idea what this means either. Then Discord user Anonymous finds an account that has been commenting on Peony TikToks and Tentapes TikToks, 
uh, called Sulphur Lake Committee. Henceforth, I will refer to them as SLC. SLC has a video up on their page with a lot of weird quotes on it. And they let everyone know in the comments that they are assessing the situation about me and that the person behind Jay's account is not Jay. Soon, people also find out that SLC has a Twitter page uh, and this page gives a lot more insight into this organization, but it also raises a whole bunch of new questions. People obviously start asking these questions uh, basically all at the same time, which makes sense, but yeah, SLC basically gets spooked by the onslaught of messages they're getting and they retract. The Discord then decides to organize themselves a little bit and form the so-called H communication team, henceforth referred to as the HCT. They will take community's questions and thoughts and condense them into tweets to send to the SLC as like an official account to communicate back and forth with them. Now, X posts a video to p &E with all of his favorite duets, I guess, uh, and at the end of the message it says, let's talk. Soon after this, X joins the Discord and holds a long-ass speech in a voice channel in what sounds like my voice, uh, but mixed in with like other voices, absolutely terrifying. Uh, but SLC starts tweeting about a miracle that they feel are about to take place. And that's when the video gets posted to the 10 tapes TikTok of my apartment. I did not shoot, edit or post this video. And it ends with me and X appearing, X disappearing again and me collapsing onto the floor. And so, from my perspective here, the last thing I remember is being at the tower, running into myself, being back at the fucking color tower, all of that, and then it's just dark. And then I wake up in my apartment, thinking like, shit, I must have been out all night, going into the Discord, and it had been a bit more than one night. Uh, and yeah, this is where we are now. The Sulphur Lake Committee. Because things weren't complicated enough already, were they? In any case, H is probably one of the most resilient unfiction protagonists we've ever seen. Providing a rundown of one of the most harrowing events of his entire life like that, while still sounding more positive than tortured. But when your online community rallies together to bring you back from the void and you drop into your apartment with the next goal of the adventure right in your hand, you tend to get a boost to the spirit, eh? Now, that was a lot. And I imagine you're a bit tired. I'm a little run down myself, even while thoroughly entertained and impressed. Let's reward ourselves with tape number six, shall we?
Well, I'm not fucking watching that again. Yeah, and neither are we. We did get something pretty valuable out of it without any codes this time. A scene of Jay going through the box of jackets he mentioned, finding a diary that knocks him out. Or worse. Most likely worse, considering the total silence from Jay and the unexpected takeover of his Discord account during H's absence. The font that represents the opponent to X, who we can assume to be O, wrote the following. I'm so sorry. I was not in control. My boy, I will never forgive myself. I tried to help, but I only made it worse. The messages from X here relate to quotes throughout time that apply to the situation in a poetic fashion. Nothing much you can't interpret yourself as a viewer at this time. At the end, however, the word hepta, that's ancient Greek for seven. Logical conclusion, seeing how the game must continue. This has been a significantly involved chapter, a whole bridge from tape five to tape six. An HTML page, a search inside H's own apartment, a new character who introduced an entire Lost Diaries aspect suggesting decades of this game being played, a computer game, establishment of an opposition force to X that's been at work this entire time confirming what we suspected through the coded messages that didn't gel with the rest, a gotcha impersonation act leading to the glitchiest most paranormal event so far, the new character taken out of play just when a breakthrough could occur, a new online presence, an audio dressing down by X mixed with messages of love, and bringing age back from the void with tape six in hand. Whew. Yeah, that was a lot, wasn't it? We really are back in classic ARG narrative territory. If it wasn't clear enough from Tape 5's event already, H is deeply embedded in an otherworldly affair, though otherworldly may not be the best way to describe it. More supernatural, I'm thinking, with the way that X and O manage to operate in the world. There is no longer any doubt. What begins as a game to the curious becomes some kind of ensnarement, pulling players close enough to X's reach to be taken to whatever place H was lost all that time. There is a potential matter of confusion concerning the diaries. They do appear to be real, and so does Jay, making the events of 1991 real. It's the last page fragment that reappeared which may not be real, the one that completed the drawing. We know it came from the email that initially suggested it was from O, Jay's father, but X established in the Peel No Elephant videos during H's travel that it was a setup. The true drawing on the last page may still be unknown, assuming there wasn't a form of trick involved with the first half of the page itself that Jay didn't know about. And if that's true, then the entire diary may be in question. I can't claim to understand the involvement of the Sulphur Lake Committee yet. For all we know, this is another outlet by X to play with. What I do know is that tackling the rest of this properly is going to require taking a moment to recover. There really was a lot of work for tape six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Four to go, not including whatever cassette tapes end up in the mix. And I must say, I'm feeling much better about the overall originality and adventure tangents that may occur from here on out. Tape five was such a pivotal point that the nature of things really changed just in the bridge that followed. You felt it too, didn't you? There are some classic touches. Glitching, teleportation, static monsters, and the classic dead person's diary elements. But there is a sense of change here. This feels more original to itself than it did in the lead up to tape 5, which, again, we must account for as equal parts tribute, inspiration, and intentional design. And I'd say that the shift we're experiencing is entirely appropriate. Tape 5 broke our worldview in the situation and made it very clear it's not what it appeared to be. We're through the door now, so things are going to look and feel different. That's all for tonight, everyone. Thanks to Raycon for sponsoring this leg of the journey. Thanks to all the community members for 10 tapes who put in so much extensive work in archiving. Thanks to all of you for watching. And thanks to my supporters on Patreon, who I know I could trust to demand I be returned from the void if I ever ended up in one. If you'd like to support Nightmind, you can do so for as little as just $2 a month, which gets your name in the credits of all major videos and allows you into the Patreon community with our Discord. This also supports the Nightmind Index for new and emerging unfiction projects, where 10 tapes had a listing during its early days. And if you can't do Patreon, you might have noticed the new thanks button below my videos. You can donate a personal thanks to me directly this way, and your comment will show up with a special tag. So if you enjoy what I do or particularly enjoy this episode and wanted to say thanks that way, you can do so. Thanks for joining me in the dark again this evening. Once more, I'm Nick Nocturne, and I'll be seeing you again real soon to finish collecting these tapes. Until next time, sleep tight.